I wanted to escape um, as many of the tropes as, as, as possible, yeah. you know, and so the idea was how, how do you create a very accurate, realistic yeah. depiction yeah. of what's unfolding, yeah. but at the same time, maybe just try and make it more of your own. So there's certain, like, like for example, there's a character in the book called Bart, and yeah. Grace, the center of the book, yeah. meets him while, on, while basically building a road. You know, yeah. the, 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 these roads that were built it's across nowhere, the box. I know, I know, I know. You know, know roads yeah. going to nowhere. Yeah. And so like, the, 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 there is a road, and they, they do, they walk past, so uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they see a workhouse, but they don't go into them. And yeah. so like, the idea was to uh, ex try and explore other other aspects. So Because yeah. you see, the thing is, with Grace is, she becomes, a bandit. Yeah. She becomes. She moves into criminality. Oh yeah. And so the idea is to explore how do you survive something like this. Yeah. By by becoming dangerous, by yeah. becoming risky. Oh, that sounds you know. really different. That sounds yeah. brilliant. You know, yeah. and so because cr crime went through the roof during the famine. This is yeah. the thing. Like yeah. I mean, you know, to survive. Yeah, people are stealing. Survivors everything. are rarely heroes. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. So Grace becomes less heroic for a while. You know, yeah. and. and so that was that was one of the things that I wanted to explore the, the the things we don't want to talk about. Yeah. Well, and under the Hawthorne tree, the children, and the start of their dad is gone to work on the roadworks. Yeah. And then their baby sister dies, and then the mother goes to find him because she has nothing, and she's sold every possession they have in the in every tiny possession, their clothing, everything gone, and she um, they're evicted, and they're meant to be going to the workhouse with a group from their 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 landlord evicts a whole group of tenants, and they're being all sent to the workhouse, but they don't want to go to the workhouse so they know they'll be separated and boys and girls won't be together and they escape and it's then their epic journey is this through famine ireland they don't want to go to the workhouse but they see a workhouse and they go to the soup kitchen and discover bodies and attack by dogs crazed dogs and all this kind of stuff they know the dogs were attacking all the people and everything yeah. so and eating the bodies so um it was exploring that, um, you know, to, this journey to go to their aunts. They'd heard about these aunts, but they never met them. They were the only family they knew they had, and um, they were trying to get to to the town where their aunts lived. So they made this ep epic because I loved all these kind of epic journeys when I was younger. And I said, I want to write a book about that. So, um, and uh, I wanted to really. Were you a fan of Walter Mackin? Yeah, yeah, I'd read him, and uh, but I, I really had read all these big kind of adventure, like American adventure books mm. when I was growing up, and boys' adventure books. I was a tomboy, so I read all the boys' adventure books. And I said, I want these kids to be, like, they're they're very very active and they're they do everything. They're not victims at all. Yeah. And they they fight against everything that's going yeah. on, you know. Yeah. So um, because I, I said they had they had more survivors, they had to survive. I I, I like the idea you're saying about you know that the, you're the. the American fiction uh, yeah. and the idea of the, the scale, the epic, because it's yeah. something that I really wanted to do as well. Because the thing that's is, what I wanted to Ar do too. Ireland is quite small, it's, yeah. you know, in terms yeah. of size. Yeah. Now, and I know back in you know in eighteen eighteen forties, traveling by horse and cart yeah. took a long time. Nah. So maybe it seems slightly bigger than we think of it now in terms of our cars. But yeah. Yeah. the scale of Ireland is 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 small in a way that our fiction also feels more domestic and we don't quite have epic literature the yeah. way that would be common to the States. Yeah. And so I think it's interesting because that... that, that but, I want this to be epic. Yeah, and I, I also sought the very same thing. I was like, how can I open out the, the, the form, the feeling of the novel so it feels like yeah. time is vast and the, sp and the landscape they, they is vast. Were, they were only walking over, you know, a few weeks, or, you know, a month or two, but I want it to be... This is like the biggest thing that's happened yeah. in Ireland, and this is the biggest thing. And I wrote it for my own daughter and for my children. And I just wanted them to know this is the big story. This is mm. the story you really have to know. And I never intended even it being published. And then it was published. And then literally, what happened? The kids and made it their own. And it's just incredible. It's out like um, 1990 it came out. It's out so long, and the kids just still adore it and read it and read it. And they know it up by heart, and they're all experts on. <laughs> they know all the other books as well. But it's just incredible. But the story is very, very simply written. I wanted to keep it uncluttered because yeah. I think American fiction is very uncluttered and I like that. Mm. And I wanted to keep it very simple. And I wanted to, I suppose, make it um, very energetic. The, mm. the story is energetic. They're moving the whole time. They're constantly yeah. doing something. They're not sitting, like, you know, thinking about things. They're, they have to keep going because if they sit down, they won't get back up again. Mm. So they have to keep going. So um, I, I really enjoyed writing the book. I wrote it in 12 weeks, so it was very quick. And... Um, it's just been such a lucky little book. It's just been such a lucky... Twelve weeks, wow. Well, yeah, such a lucky little book. Yeah, because I was haunted by them. I was actually haunted by them. They made me write it, and I couldn't, at night, I'd be dreaming about them and thinking about them. And my little boy was only a baby, and I was going to say, I'm going to put this thing away. It's so stupid. You're not a historian. You're not a writer. Why are you doing this to yourself? 
and then I said, no, I have to, I have to just keep going. I have to write it. I, I, I mean, I wasn't even intending it to be published. I just wanted to write for my daughter. And I said, no, if I put it away now, I won't come back. I have to keep going. And it was in my head, and I'm making my brain go racing at night, and I just had to do it. So I wrote it, and my lucky little book. <laughs> do you love trees? Yeah, I do. Yeah, but that's why it's under the water. Yeah, tree, yeah, yeah. But like, but it's like as a writer, that there's, there's 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 the resonance of a tree has carries yeah. much more so, meaning for yeah. a lot of writers than just simply describing oh, yeah, it. I'm or, obsessed, you know. especially at hawthorn trees. And uh, that story was written because I heard of three skeletons found under a hawthorn tree. Okay. And uh, and the hawthorn tree is a fairy tree, and it just drew me as well. And uh, I mean, there's other trees mentioned in the book too, but the hawthorn tree is the iconic thing of the book that they're. There's a hawthorn tree at the back of their house and the baby sister dies and they can't, they've no coffin, they've no one to bury and the father's gone and they just put the body in under the hawthorn tree. Mm. And of course then I heard then later on about three skeletons found under hawthorn trees. So I had to have some child buried under a hawthorn okay. tree. And um, hawthorn trees meant to be very lucky and the fairies protect the children. That's why that's why they're there. So um, it's just been strange, but the trees as well, yeah. Why have you got trees in your book oh, too? Oh, I love trees. I yeah. write about trees all the time. And But the thing is, I think it's probably fair, fair to say that every tree description that's in any of my books, the description actually evokes the feeling of the character who's seeing the tree. Yeah, oh, that's so, good. So, like, there's, you know, you get these different, you know, very, very kind of, you know, yeah. effects of, of, of trees in Ireland, but it's very often yeah. very much to do with, with what you know what the mood is and, yeah. and, 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 and the symbolism of work yeah um, in, the, in the book the kids actually go into a woods and they feel safe sacred and safe in there and timeless and the famine isn't encroaching because when they're walking the roads they're seeing carts with bodies and they're seeing people in terrible states and and then they they just can't handle that and they go off the road and they go into the trees yeah and they actually stay in the trees for a while because they just they have to escape the reality of what they're experiencing and uh, they're safe there but again of course they have to get back on the road again because they have to try and find their aunts but uh, the trees is kind of lovely special place for them that they feel safe in the book ends my book ends in a forest in yeah. a field of bluebells yeah that's gorgeous you know, yeah. it's like they just, just you know trees mm. are and where does it end like at the end of the famine it, in the middle it, of the it, famine it, it, it ends after the famine when she she's entered adulthood and yeah. you know she loses her she loses the ability to speak oh no for a large for a portion of the book due oh. to what she has witnessed but also what she has endured and what she has you know what she's done yeah and i I was really interested in that idea of that there is a silence yeah beyond there's a silence of of the people who took their stories to the grave yeah and there's a silence very much of the people who did not speak about what they went through yeah and my grandparents never spoke about the family or you know as in stories they would have yeah carried from from their parents or or back and i think that's very interesting and so there, there is that aspect of what what did many people do to survive you know yeah. and they didn't speak of it and very often in the folklore mm. uh just the, the folklore t- commission testimony that was yeah, taken from grandchildren that, yeah, yeah. And, and, and children um very often what what's uh what's found is the stories that are told always happen to somebody in another townland yeah they or somebody, their you know, town. it was never it in, in their ne- town. never in my house it was yeah. always the other house or the, yeah. so things that happened this is this this dissociation in and Irish yeah. people still do that they still say oh my county was fine or yeah. my town was fine and yeah. it's this kind of it's shame and yeah. I'm really interested in that why do we still feel yeah. ashamed about it well, that's why when I wrote the book there was nothing really about the famine and nothing for children especially and uh, when it came out then I said look it's really important that the story is told and uh, but I remember when I was growing up, my family from Skibreen, my mother's from Skibreen, and my aunts, and my family, my cousins were from Skibreen, and uh, which was the worst place during the famine, and West Cork and uh, Kerry as well is very bad. And but um, I do remember my aunts not saying a bit about the famine, and I remember I had these two aunts, which I put them in the book called Nana and Lena, and they were very old ladies, and I met them when I was only a little girl. I was actually frightened of them with these two old women in big black shawls. And um, they were, one was 101 and another was in her late 90s. And are they, you know, so the story of the famine had kind of come through. And that's West Cork was so bad. But my, my family wouldn't say, oh, we were badly affected. But sure, they must have been. So um, so I had that in my head and these old ladies, since I made them go then to these two aunts. And my mother made me change some of the names in the book because they were kind of West Cork names. And she can't let people know it's our family and all that. So um, I changed then. I kept the two aunts, Nana and Lena. And the kids love these old aunts, Nano and Lena, that, they, that this is their safety. They have to get to Nano and Lena's place to their shop in the town. So um, it's great. But uh, I think there, there was such a silence 
And there still is, anyway. And I remember when I wrote the book, I, my publisher was saying, this is, this is going to be a disaster. You could be attacked for writing a book about this yeah. for kids to read about finding bodies and being attacked by dogs and you know, all this horrible stuff that happened during the famine. And he said, be prepared for the worst. Yeah. But and, this, and I was actually really nervous. And I said, yeah. oh, my God. And I remember I did a radio interview. And the, way, and the way he was doing all different books. It was one of the book programmes and uh, everybody had their book, you know. And he picked this up and he kind of looked at it disdainfully and he said to me, do you not think you better to write about fairies or animals or something nice for children to read? And I said, well, this is kind of an Irish story. Had, he, had I, he ever read the, Grim, the real Grimm's fairy tales? I don't know. And I, I, mean, I was like, <laughs> oh my God. And then I came home and I said, my husband's going to be a disaster and the book was coming out like I think a week, the week later. Yeah. But that interview was going to be... I said, oh my God, it's going to be awful. And I said, my husband, we'll probably have to come to emigrate now when this book comes out because it's going to be, everybody's going to be attacking me and saying I should never have written it. And then what happened? The kids picked it up. The kids loved it. And yeah. the kids told that. And it came out on the 23rd of May. And by Christmas, it was just being reprinted, 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 reprinted because <coughs> they wanted to read it. So, and, they've, and they've kept wanting to read it ever since. And they read it in all different languages too. And they've no problem. So it's just incredible. So the family is a story people want to read. So I'm sure your book's going to do really, really well. Is it over a year or two or just over, over a few? Over five months? years. Over five years? Yeah. So then, is she 14 at the start? 14 at the start and she's 19 ish. So then right? she's grown up then. Yeah. So I had, what I did with mine is this is just over like a short period. And then I did a second book, Wildflower Girl, where Peggy, the younger child, goes to America. But also you see what's happening, Eileen and Michael. And then I left a gap and I came back and did a third one because Peggy goes to America. And then I did a third one, which is about, you know, when the Irish actually began to get a bit of land themselves. And um, so it kind of is a circle of Irish history and the fall of the big house and that, you know. So um, the three books that become a tri- have become a trilogy. So I don't know, will you go on and do any more or is that, that it? You know, the last time somebody said that to me... Uh, I haven't read it, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, 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 these, giving answers to these things are always problematic because my first novel, Red Sky in Morning, when that came out, I did an interview with Arminta Wallace in the Irish Times and she said, oh, would you ever write a follow-up to this book? Yeah. Because, you know, the character of the mother, Sarah, she, mm-hmm. she has this great voice. Yeah. I'd love to read a book about what happens to her yeah. who was left behind because yeah. her husband went to America yeah. and was hunted out of, hunted out of Donegal. And, and I was like, not at all. I said, that, 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 would, that would be like a family saga kind of yeah. di- dynastic kind of thing. I said, Sebastian Barry does that so well, yeah. I would not dare to tread on his toes. Yeah. And then about two months later, because I had, I had already written my second book at this yeah. point, about two months later, I sat down to write this, just to start getting onto paper, the character that was nagging at me, yeah. this 14-year-old girl, and I started writing, and it was, God, this is 19th century. This is, mm, this is, this is opening of the famine. Yeah. Mm. And she's 14, and she's got a mother, yeah. and she's got a younger brother. Yeah. And let me do the maths. All oh, right, okay, she's called his daughter. I'm doing the bloody saga novel that I said I wouldn't <laughs> do. So this book is actually... It's a connection to the other book, is it? It's related to the first novel. Yeah. Um, but is there a third? I don't know. <laughs>